day guys, Peter from Peach Tools. Awesome day here in New Zealand today, it's really really hot. I wouldn't be dead for a million bucks today. Anyway guys, today I want to have a bit of a yarn about inverter MIG welders. Uh, you're into plasma cutting and stuff, but you're going to have to have a MIG welder or some sort of welder to uh, get your projects together. Anyway, this is what I use, I thought I'd give you a quick rundown on how to start with a MIG welder, because most of you guys here are new. And um, always remember guys, subscribe to the channel if you like what you see, drop me a like, drop me a comment, come say good day Pete. And uh, let's get into this video, eh? So a lot of you fellas have been asking me what sort of uh, welder do you use, Pete? Well, this is what I use. I use a, uh, a MIG 250, and it's an inverter welder. Um, I've had this for quite a few years, probably had this for seven or eight years. Before this, I had a transformer welder, which was the uh, same amperage, but it was using transformers instead of the inverter version of it. I go for an inverter any day of the week, and uh, I can just give you a few basics on how these things work, especially if you're new here. Um, just the basics that you need to get it going and it's not very hard to learn how to weld one of these things You might not be an expert overnight, but you can certainly stick a couple of things together with it I guarantee it. Anyway, that's what I use and this is how I taught myself I don't proclaim to be an expert welder, but I can definitely stick a couple of bits of metal together with it. Anyway guys, let's get into it, eh? So the basics of this welder are we've got a, uh, a MIG torch like so and it's got a tip in it like that that your wire comes out here you got your other end of your plug here, which screws into here onto your MIG machine. And uh, what happens basically is, this is not like arc welding where you have a, a, um, a rod that you burn down when you hold on a handle and it burns down and you have to keep replacing the rod. What happens is we have on this um, inverter welder here, this MIG welder here, we have a big coil of wire like this. See that big coil of wire? That's a 15 kilo coil of wire. Just depending what size your machine is, some of them are five kilos, some of them are only a kilo, because you can buy all different sizes of these machines depending on what you want to use it for. But this wire here goes inside this machine, and I'll show you in a minute. And what you do is you thread it up through this torch, and as soon as you push the button, it continuously comes out of the end. I'll show you how to do that later. But um, it's a really good way of welding for the simple reason that you can just continuously weld all the time. And this sort of welding here, when I started doing it, because I started with a stick welder and I wasn't very good at it, and I didn't like it because it had a lot of slag on it. You know, the, the slag is, is the, the soot that you get on your weld. After you weld it with a stick welder, you have to belt it off with a hammer. Whereas when you use this, you don't have to do that. It's a cleaner weld, and you can keep keep welding all the time. They basically call these things um, the uh, glue gun in the welding world because it's so easy to weld with them. They just stick together. That's, that's my uh, opinion anyway. Um, you don't have to be a brilliant welder to use these. Um, I've made a lot of stuff over the years, and my stuff hasn't fallen apart. Anyway, I'll show you a bit more, guys. Now, when I run my welder, I use the big coil of wire like I just showed you there, the 15 kilo coil of wire, and this goes for ages and ages, and this sort of basically never runs out. But you can also, with that wire that I'm using there, you have to use CO2. I run a big bottle of CO2, um, and it just shields the um, it shields the weld so you don't get slag and it doesn't get all crappy. It just it, Once you learn how to weld for a while, you realise what it's doing, and it's putting a shield around whatever you're welding, the gas does, and it doesn't let any contaminants in, basically. That's the idea of it. But you can use this welder without CO2. You can use it gas or gasless. So if you want to use it without gas, CO2, or whatever gas you're running, you can get wire like this, which is like a flux core wire, which if you've, any, if you, if you've ever done any soldering or something, you know how when you solder something, you have a coil of solder like this, and it's got um, it's got flux in the inside of it. It's exactly the same as what this is. It's um, it's flux core wire, and you can use that on this machine too. You just put this in the in the spool, and then you run it through your gun, and then you can use that. But to do that, you have to change from here, which at the moment, can you see that, guys? It's set on gas. Can you see that? It's set on gas. So what you have to do is you have to take this out of here because when you're running gas through your torch is coming out here you imagine your torch is coming out here and you're running gas through it you're running your, your CO2 from the back of the machine through there this torch here is the positive lead of your torch and the earth is the negative lead you plug your earth cable into here right but if you're running gasless wire right you have to go reversal polarity so what you do is take your plug out of this one and you put it into this one and I can get it in there because as you can see I don't do that very often 
So you put them in there like that. You tighten them up, and then you plug your earth into this one. So uh, yeah, so you can either run one or one or both. And most even the cheap welders, this is only a cheap welder. They all have the reverse, so you can run it either running gas or you can run it without gas, which is really really good. Um, I love these welders. They are really easy to use. Once you get the hang of it, I reckon you can learn how to weld one of these welders in probably two hours and you're sticking shit together. It's really awesome. Anyway, let's carry on. And also the advantage of the inverter MIGs is they're really easy to set up, guys. So there's your plug and here's your uh, earth clamp that goes onto whatever you're welding. You put this on what, one end of whatever you're welding and your torch on the other and it makes the contact and you just pull the button and you start welding, actually. So what you do is you just plug this into here. We're into the negative because I'm using gas. And I don't let that positive and negative confuse you. It's as easy to do, as easy as easy. Once you've been doing it for five minutes, you'll say, hey, I, I knew how to do that anyway. You know how it is. So there's your ugly earth clamp there. So say for the sake, you want to weld something there, you just hook that onto your table like so. And then what we have to do now is put the gun in here. So we'll go and get that ready, guys. So remember I showed you before my gun in here, and this is the other end of it here. Now this is just the basic, this is a, a Euro fitting. They call them a Euro fitting, or they call these guns a Benzel style gun. You'll see that when you start buying consumables and that. So you, well, this is a Euro fitting on this, on this machine. And basically Euro is European, or universal, whatever you like to call it. Right, this is, um, yeah, if you notice there, you can see that guys. It has like a thing here for your switch. Those two buttons there go onto here and they operate your switch on the gun that's what connects your switch to the gun, you're off and on your wire comes out of here that coil of wire that I showed you and here is your shielding gas, whatever gas you're using, well I'm using CO2 so all you do basically is you get your torch and you plug them in here like that till he fits and then you screw up the end of it like so you get to make sure it's tight, like that. Tight, then you got your gun hooked up. You've got your earth lead hooked up here. Piece of cake. And now we're ready to go and put the wire in. So let's go and do that, guys. So remember I showed you that uh, big coil of wire, guys. Well, that goes around here. It's got a little button on the side of your machine. They're all basically the same. You might have a smaller door or a bigger door or whatever, but they're all the same, these, these MIG welders. So you just flick that open like that, and you go in there and in here, you put your uh, your big coil of wire. It just goes in here, it's quite simple. You just flick that up like so, and then you get your coil of wire, and you put them on like that, like so, and then you just flick the button like that, so it doesn't, so when you're winding it, when the machine's pulling it, it doesn't come off, because you end up with an awful lot of mess, and it'll cost you a lot of money for a sweet bugger all, you know? So just make sure you flick that across, or whatever you've got there, you might have a little wheel or something to tighten up, so just tighten that up there. And then I'll show you how to thread it into the uh, machine. Piece of cake. Now what you're going to need for this, guys, is just uh, like a pair of pliers, like so. I'm just using these because I found them lying around. Now the wire here, if you notice, that it, um, I've got it wrapped around here so it doesn't all untangle and do something horrible. So before we do anything, uh, we undo this here, which is the uh, little lever that holds down your wheel, like so. Let me show you. There's a little wheel in here like that. So you take that lever off, you flick it up, and then it um, that wheel flicks up. See that? Piece of cake. So what we do then is we take this wire out of here. So you've got your wire end like that. Now see this has got a little kink at the end of it. You don't want that, you want to cut it off straight. So just use your wire snippers and just snip it off like that. So you've got a nice straight edge like that. And then what you need to do guys, is see this here, you need to feed your wire in through here. Okay, and like I say, make sure it's coming from the bottom. Feed your wire in through here. Push it through. And what you'll see happen, is you'll see it coming through here onto some guide wheels. Now here's your guide wheels here, now if you notice, when I push this through here, it goes through this first little channel, there's a little channel in there, so you just push it through there, it'll line up, and then push it through the little nozzle, that you see here, there's a little nozzle there, 
push it right through there, keep it going, just until you uh, can get it through enough, just so there, it's through just a little bit, it's probably through to about here, and then what you do is you put that top wheel down, and then you put the clamp back up like that, and you just tighten this up just a little bit so it doesn't roll out. And then, so that's our wire drive motor here, that's our drive mechanism here, you can see the wire going in here, in here, it's in here, we've clicked that wheel down, remember, and we'll fit it through here. So what we need to do now is just lean over the front of the machine and turn it on. So turn the machine on, grab your gun, push the button on the gun and watch, see if these are turning and it's also turning this wheel. You see this is turning but it's not turning the wheel. What we need to do is just tighten that up a little bit. You don't want it so tight that it squashes your wire because it won't weld properly. We'll try it again, see it's starting to move now, we'll go a little bit more. Starting to move, we'll go a little bit more. That's a bit better. Our wire's going through there, it's coming through the torch. Wire's coming out of the torch, looks really good, so we'll just cut a lump off the end of it. Like so, and uh, yeah, well the torch is ready for welding. And this. This inverter welder is pretty basic, mine's a pretty basic model. We've just got uh, a couple of gauges and a couple of um, different settings that you can adjust. It's very, very easy. This one here, they're all much the same no matter what machine you've got, it's all just a variation of this. I'll just show you how easy it is. This is just the voltage. So in other words, that's how much, how many amps are coming out of your uh, your torch. So how many amps are burning, the, burning your wire, basically, that's what it's all about. And this one here is the speed of your wire coming out of your gun. So I'll, sh I'll show you that one. But I can't show you the amps because I'm not actually welding anything at the moment. But I'll show you the speed. So if I put the speed there on three like that, can you see that? I'm on three and I pull the button. See the wire coming out at that speed there? So it depends how fast you can weld. When I first started welding, I couldn't even keep up with it on that. But um, the more you do it, the faster speed you need and um, the easier you'll find it is to weld. So we'll cut that off there. And now if I turn that up, say, to 8 or 9, you watch the speed that that, that wire comes out, and that coincides with how fast you're welding. So we'll pull the trigger and see how fast that comes out. See how fast that comes out? That's heaps faster, isn't it? I mean, that's a huge lump of wire. It's just come out of there. This is, this is the difference. So, uh, yeah, so that's about it, basically. Two basic controls, and uh, that's your lot. See a if I can go like that without stabbing myself, I'll push the button on 8 and I'll turn it down. And then turn it down and it comes down to virtually nothing. See that? And then I'll turn it back up again. See the wire coming out there? See? Got the wire coming out. Still coming out, curling it around. And then the more you turn this up, the faster your wire comes out. So you basically never run out of wire, which is a good thing. Really easy to learn to weld with these things, I can't stress that enough. Really awesome machines. Like I say, I'm not much cop at welding, but I can weld with this machine, not a problem. Anyway, uh, guys, that's just the basics. i will be a uh, basics inverter welder. Um, I know a lot of you guys know all this stuff, but a lot of you guys don't. So, anyway, if you're starting from nothing, this is a little video for you. It just gives you an idea of what to buy and, uh, and what you're looking for.